I'm Lux and this is Riot and we live in this 6x12 cargo trailer. This is part 3 of a mini series on me putting in a solar power system and a diesel heater. Let's go to the footage of whether or not the diesel heater works. Okay, it's the moment of truth. I just woke up. I put a little diesel in the tank. So we got an error code. All right, so my first few test runs ran the error code 10 and it wasn't getting fuel from the fuel pump over to the actual heater. And I thought maybe it was the way that we ran the fuel line. I was a little nervous we'd have to rerun it. However, Robert did a bit of research and what I failed to do was to prime the pump. So we had to prime it to get the fuel to pump all the way over to the heater in order for it to work, which is now working. It's blowing warm air. We're gonna let it run for a little bit to continue testing it, but it's a go. So how did you end up priming the pump? But you just push the bottom two buttons, the OK button and the down arrow button, just push them in. You'll get a little thing that says H on the board, off. Push the up button, it'll turn it on, and it just runs the fuel pump only until it pumps the fuel all the way down the line into the heater. Once it's into the heater, turn that back off, and just put the on button. And sometimes it'll take a couple times to get it to really kick in, but once it does, it starts up pretty fast, and right now we are running at full heat, full power, so everything is running perfect. Could I have been so self-reliant as to look that up myself? Yes. But since I had someone here that already has a diesel heater and has used it for several months, I went and cried at him. Not really cry. No, you weren't crying. There was no tears. No. Just a very sad face. So thank you, Robert, for being my troubleshooter. And don't forget to prime your diesel heater pump on your first try of using it. The solar power is doing good, albeit the only thing that I am currently charging is the diesel heater. I have a moratorium put on my budget since it's only halfway through the month and I have spent a little bit more than anticipated uh, for putting all this stuff together uh, considering that I am still supposed to be at work except naturally the Riverside Fire had me evacuate and terminated my contract early so I am a free agent again um, and I have enough money it's just uh, I love a budget I feel peaceful when I follow my budget so I'm gonna continue to follow my budget and I'll continue the project next month. I'm not in a rush and uh, something for you all to look forward to. So I don't have your viewer questions yet but I am eager to answer them as I'm sure there will be some loving critique in the comments section about my labor. Um, but before I even get to those, I have a few questions that I myself know will be asked or should be asked. <laughs> first of all, let me state if it wasn't clear in the first two videos that my intention is not to be an instructor per se on how to do this. It's more a uh, showing that if I can do it, anyone can do it. Um, granted, I had Robert's help, but he had me do all the steps uh, regardless, and uh, I hope it inspires anyone that might be fearful of being so hands-on that it's very doable and um, you don't have to feel confident, <laughs> but you should have some courage. That's how I feel. I, I still don't feel super confident with my work or my level of understanding exactly of what I did, but um, you do it kind of anyway with, with some faith. So I hope it's, if anything, 
encouraging, and if nothing else, maybe entertaining. Two, I have a feeling that I'm going to get some questions. Number one, why in the world did I use a one-inch hole saw for the solar cables coming through the roof when the cables themselves are not that big? And the answer to that is that I didn't have a drill bit that was an appropriate size for those cables. The best fit was the one inch hole saw. So could I have made smaller holes in the roof? Yeah, absolutely. But I didn't. And the little house that you put on top to protect the cables and to kind of close up the roof up there will protect it from any rain. And I sealed it very, very well. Do not make cock jokes when you're using cock. And I have a solution where I'm going to plug that hole. We'll do that in another video. It's not a big deal and it's definitely not unsightly. And I would say it's only about a half inch, like I would have had to go with like a half inch hole saw. So it's only like half an inch too big and it's not problematic. So it's just a matter of that's what I had on hand and I didn't want to go buy a drill bit just for that. Although maybe I should have but it is what it is at this juncture. But I laughed at myself after I realized I made a one inch hole for those two little cables. And I'm sure someone out there laughed at me too, which is fine. The other questions that I assume that I'm gonna get, and I could be wrong, but they're questions that I thought of. You too? Okay. Is what about having an inverter? That's something that wasn't included on my board of solar charging components. And the answer to that is, when I set out in June of 2019 to start traveling, my very good friend Sarah, hello Sarah, got me this 300 watt power inverter, which I haven't even used yet. Haven't had to, but it was a really good gift for an emergency. And as you can see, it has a 12 volt on it. And it would be more than adequate for charging my laptop. I probably wouldn't want to use it for like a fridge, but it, it's fine. So once I get those 12 volt, uh, yeah, 12 volt outlets installed, then I can always use this. I also still have Ugh, my Jackery and this 110 outlet is a pure sine wave so I can also use my solar power and my 12 volt that I'll be installing um, to charge my Jackery up or I can still charge it traditionally like I do currently with a 100 watt solar panel outside um, and I can use that to charge my laptop because that's really the only extraneous thing that I have going uh, that I think about. <laughs> Welcome to my life. A lot of it includes dog butts. The reason I didn't end up using this battery is because it's only 40 amp hours, which means something... Basically, it's not enough juice, which is why I got the bigger AGM battery. <sighs> Electricity is not my jam, you guys. So my explanation of this isn't very good. Basically, if you feel like I feel about solar power, I would go to the Will Prowse website. There's a link down below. You can basically calculate what you need for the amount of devices that you're going to use. So you just go, I want to, like for me... I don't even have it yet, but eventually 12 volt fridge, diesel heater, laptop, phone, my earbuds. Those are the things that I charge. It's not very much. So 200 watts, sufficient, followed his diagram, easy. You can also have a friend. You could go to one of those places that will do it all for you. I think that's great. You're just gonna have to invest the money that they charge for their level of expertise. I like doing things on a budget. I'm very frugal and I like doing things myself because I had to get way outside my comfort zone for this project. All right, that will be it for this video. Once these all publish, I will get to your viewer questions. I really appreciate you watching and commenting and liking. 
thank you so much and we will see you shortly for the next one